Alright. Somebody just blasted. I am Cody Reader, and uh, I today I'm going to add water to several different kinds of substances. I have here some sulfuric acid, some hydrochloric acid, nitric acid, some sodium hydroxide, and ammonium nitrate. Now, I've got these two camera angles here, so hopefully you'll be able to see, because I've got this uh, temperature meter. So I can uh, check a temperature and you can see what temperature it is. Apparently that log's quite hot because it's in the sun. Anyway, my most popular video is of me pouring a small amount of water into a small amount of uh, industrial grade sulfuric acid. Uh, I did that to prove that uh, sometimes it doesn't matter if you're pouring acid water into acid or acid into water, unlike what your uh, chemistry teachers tell you in school. You know, yes, it probably does make a difference if you're using a large quantity of a very powerful acid, but if you're just using vinegar, it, you know, the teacher has gotten after me for pouring water into vinegar to dilute it, and that just kind of made me mad enough to make these videos. <clears throat> anyway. Let's start with ammonium nitrate. Ammonium nitrate here. This probably won't get hot. In fact, let me see it. All right. Let's uh, see what. Let's uh, give this a little swirl. Now, see if I can measure the temperature here. Oh yeah, the temperatures drop significantly. So ammonium nitrate actually absorbs heat when you re react it with water. Now, let's get me a little more water. Now this next one should produce a little bit of heat, but I've done this before, and you see, it basically almost starts to boil, but you know it doesn't explode or nothing. It's, uh, hopefully the wind don't pick up too much. Check the temperature, and you can see it's gotten to. Almost the boiling point of water, about 200 degrees Fahrenheit. All right. So next, let's start with some uh, concentrated nitric acid. This stuff is anhydrous; contains no water. Um, in fact, <clears throat> I haven't done this before with this particular acid. At least not in this quantity. So I think I'm going to throw some gloves on at least. All right. Go ahead and tip in this water. Okay, yeah. I didn't expect it to, but better safe than sorry. Alright, so now the temperature meter. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but uh, the temperature is roughly, roughly unchanged. The temperature, if anything, has dropped a little bit. Now, Go into the hydrochloric acid. Now, hydrochloric acid, I'm fairly certain, won't do anything. Yeah, it's already got water in it. Uh, you can't get hydrochloric acid very concentrated because hydrogen chloride is a gas at room temperature. Then you must dissolve it into the water. And yeah, it's about the same temperature as anything else. I, that was 115 degrees Fahrenheit. And this uh, other beaker that hasn't had anything to do is 118. So now, now let's uh, move that camera a little bit. The last videos, which have been my most popular videos, is I used industrial grade sulfuric acid that wasn't very pure, and I also used a very small quantity of it. Now I have, you know, 250 milliliters of uh, much more pure acid. It's actually a uh, analytical grade sulfuric acid here. It's almost clear instead of brown. Now, it is anhydrous, contains very little if any water. I'm going to go ahead and tip in a little bit of uh, just a small quantity of uh, distilled water here. Let's see what happens in this situation.
basically see the same thing. I'm actually quite disappointed. I was hoping that it might do something more interesting because I spent a little bit of money on this acid. But this temperature has risen by about 100 degrees. It's a, you know, it started at 115. And now she's a, uh, now she's right around 210. So that little bit of water did create quite a bit of heat, but it wasn't enough to do anything interesting. So I have one more thing for you. Now I have donned a little bit more protective equipment. See, I've got a full acid suit on. Got me a bucket of lime water sitting nearby. The face shield, the face shield of course. And I'm going to be dumping in water with a pole. Because this here is some sulfuric acid, which is fairly pure, at least 99%. But it has been heated to a high temperature. It's nearly 200 degrees. Well, 170 of course then heated to a high temperature. Now, now, this has been described as the worst case scenario, is a small amount of water into a large quantity of hot sulfuric acid. You see there I've got about half a liter and only about uh, you know, 550 milliliters here. Now, if anything should blow up, I'm hoping this does. The temperature increased only a little bit. <clears throat> kind of disappointing, really. But it does show you that adding water into the acid isn't as bad as people say. Now, the only thing I've got left now is to dump in a lot of water quickly. So, let's put the shield back on. And let's do that. Let's see what temperature that attained. very much. <clears throat> and so now I just have a diluted solution of sulfuric acid which I probably will use for batteries or something. And I'm afraid that's probably the best I can do with what I have. If anyone's got a video of them pouring a small amount of water into a 55 gallon drum of very concentrated pure sulfuric acid I'd love to see it, and if anyone's got any examples of when sulfuric acid is actually exploding or doing anything interesting, I'd love to see that as well, and please post them as a video response. I personally have never seen a reaction that uh, is bad from pouring water into acid unless I was making nitroglycerin or something, in which case it does kind of matter, because I don't want to get the explosives hot. But. It is hot, you know, but it didn't explode or anything. Ugh. Anyway, do as you order, add your acid into your water. By the way, this is what happens if you get a drop of concentrated sulfuric acid on you. See how it got on me and rolled off? And it burned my skin? This was real acids I was working with.